I already know what you're thinking. You're either thinking, what? MCU Spider-Man needs no fixing. He's already perfect. Or you're on the other side of the spectrum thinking, this a-hole really thinks he can fix MCU Spider-Man. Good luck. Now, look, I think this interpretation of Spider-Man is fine how it is. I have tiny things that bother me about the character, but nothing to get me to stop watching the films. So I'm not in any way saying that this version of the character is bad, it, it's fine. But you'd be blind if you couldn't say that the internet has criticized this version of the character for multiple reasons, some being legitimate criticisms and others just being a little nitpicky. For today's video, I'd like to cover what I think Marvel can do to fix most people's issues with the character while still keeping the core of this version of the character intact. We've got multiple things to cover, so let's just jump right to it. Uncle Ben. You know, this one's a pretty divisive one. I've seen a lot of people comment that without Uncle Ben's mention, the films and the character have felt empty and without the heart that makes Peter who he truly is. And I would agree to some extent. I think there are some things about the character that feel a bit empty while the true main heart is still intact. But I've also seen people say they don't want to hear about Ben. They're tired of seeing the same stuff over and over again. But nonetheless, the absolute removal of any mention of Uncle Ben is kind of insane. To never mention someone who meant so much to Peter is kind of hard to buy into. So I think I've found a way to correct this. In Spider-Man 3, I think the best way to go about correcting this is a little something called the Seven Stages of Grief or more specifically, the last four. The seven stages of grief go a little something like this. Shock, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, testing, and finally, acceptance. In this film, I'd like to set up that Peter's at stage four, bargaining. Throughout the first half of the film, while Peter's struggling with the conflict, I'd like to see, you know, something noticeably off about him. Someone like a police officer could ask Spidey what's wrong, and he should just say, that's nothing. Weird time of the year is all. The film will take place in the month of Uncle Ben's death anniversary, but we don't know that yet. Quick film lesson for you guys, just so I, this next part makes sense. Each act in a film has a turning point, something to turn the film on its head and keep it interesting for the viewer. So I want to go over what I think should happen in the turning point of Act 2, the exact middle of the film. Peter's on the run for this film, right? So maybe there's a battle or a chase scene, preferably at night, that doesn't go how he wants it to or in his favor at all, and he needs to get somewhere safe, somewhere to recover or gather his bearings. He's got nowhere to go but the closest, darkest area he can find, a graveyard. You see where I'm going with this? Peter lands in the graveyard, beaten pretty badly, but by this point of the hero's journey, our hero needs to be at his wit's end. The hero needs to go through what's called the Revelation, or the Abyss, where a hero goes through a death and rebirth, either physically by getting new gear to change the game, or mentally by giving up a way of thinking to give them the upper hand, and that's what's gonna happen here. He lands not so gracefully, and pretty much right on his face. He slowly gets up when he looks at the grave gravestone in front of him, Benjamin Franklin Parker. Through this scene, I really want to set up that Peter's been at the bargaining stage of grief for a pretty long time. In the bargaining stage, you see, you try to seek a way out of the pain you're feeling. Try to find the easiest way possible not to feel so bad. And Peter's way of doing this these past two years has been ignoring it. Peter doesn't want to feel the pain he felt when Ben died, so he chooses to ignore the topic altogether hoping it'll make him feel better, which is a genuine coping mechanism for some people, but it's not exactly a healthy one. Seeing this and being at his wit's end with the conflict will cause Peter to understandably break down. He cries, begging and pleading for Uncle Ben to help him. He doesn't know what to do, while also apologizing for ignoring him and almost forgetting about him. Peter can't not think about Ben now. I mean, he's literally right in front of him. It's here Peter is going to be able to regain his strength for the coming fight. He's going to learn that ignoring Ben only made him a little weaker, but embracing his pain can and will make him stronger. If there's one thing every fan knows about Uncle Ben is that it was good with words. So right here, Peter needs his words to get him back up to his feet once again, whether it be through a dreamscape scene like this, or a message on his gravestone. And you know, I think it's been long enough since the Raimi films to hear the great power line again, but you know, if Marvel decided not to do it, I'd understand, and we could also go with something else with the same kind of message. Graveyards are where people go to die, but it's also where Peter's mindset about Ben will go to die as well. Tone. To be completely honest, I think the campy and funny tone of the last two movies is great, and I honestly have no problem with it, but I think that if we're thinking about natural progression for the story, the tone needs to be a little more serious. With a cliffhanger like the one Marvel gave us, I think there's no other way the tone can go. Now look, there can still be jokes, it's in Peter's character to make jokes when he's feeling nervous or pressured, but I think the jokes should come more from Peter being uncomfortable and less from situational things, because let's be honest, the situation Peter Parker is about to be in is absolutely horrible. His worst fear has come to life and it, 
will probably kind of ruin his life before he can clear his name. And speaking of, Peter's identity. I don't think Peter's identity should stay revealed. I think that there are many easy ways to clear his name, uh, like proving that the video was a hoax. When you think about the options they have to clear his name, it won't be too difficult to write. The entire last film was about how he's different than Iron Man and how he's his own hero, so it would only be an arc regression for him to pull an Iron Man and have his identity still out by the end of the film. Peter's dealt with stuff like this before and come out on top. I mean look, the best version of Spider-Man to date, Spectacular, did it perfectly. Take even a smidge of what they did there and you're good. The villain. Here's the biggest one for me. While I love the villains of the first two films, and think that they're some of the better villains we've gotten in all the Spidey films, there's been one tiny thing about each of them that I really want to see gone in this next movie, and I also think it would be another regression of story if they continued with it. Tony Stark. Let's be honest, the two villains we've gotten were great, but they were against Tony, not Peter. Uh, they only fight Peter and come to hate him because he's in the way of their arc against Tony Stark. I mean, but at the base of them, they're really just Stark villains. I mean, really think about it for a second. So I think that the next film, this needs to change. Villains should be coming after Peter because of who he is, because of his identity. Not because, you know, he's connected to Stark or anything. I mean, you're probably thinking, what are you stupid? Why would they do that? Of course he's not going to be connected to Stark. He's dead. Well, you know what, I thought the same thing too with Far From Home, but look at that. And again, you know, I think it mostly made sense for the first two films' villains. I was a little more disappointed with Far From Home that he was connected to Stark, but I do think that Mysterio is better than Vulture, but you know, he's grown out of that Tony Stark shell now and is fully his own person. The entire last film, and the first film really, were supposed to be about that. So the villains for Spider-Man 3 need to be Peter Parker villains and not Tony Stark villains. Closing thoughts. While I think the MCU's interpretation of my favorite character ever is just fine, I recognize that there is a lot of criticisms people have about it, and I think that it could easily be course corrected in the third Spider-Man film to make more fans happy with this version of the character. Now, you may or may not disagree with what I thought they should do, but if you didn't, just remember, I'm just a guy on YouTube talking about fictional characters. Don't let my opinion ruin your day. If you disagree, please just let me know what you think in the comments, what they should do or shouldn't do, or yeah. <laughs> Alright everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing. Join the Patreon if you really want to support the channel and the Discord if you want to come talk to me or anyone else on the channel. We got a cool little community down there. And this is the last video. I'm going to be able to talk about this. This is your last chance right here, right now to join November's giveaway. Go check that out. Join it, please, because I don't want anyone to miss out. Giveaway link is in the description below. The winner is going to be announced on November 30th. So, just get ready for that. <laughs> so, yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And this is going to be the last video for a little bit until the first week of December because I got a big series coming up then. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. And as always, stay nerdy.